not here in this room that we can fellowship together with you. But in the meantime, we do hope that this service speaks to your heart. Again, we invite you after this service to join in with the coffee and conversation down in the gathering space. There are some delicious looking brownies and I've had a first-hand report that they are as good as they look. So I invite you to join <coughs> down in the uh, gathering space. Sunday school classes this morning, uh, two for the adults, one for the youth and one for the children. The class that has been meeting in the conference room is starting a new 10-week series entitled Death, Re Death and Resurrection of the Messiah. It's a little bit early to start with Lent, but it's never too early to dig in a little bit deeper with the life of, of Jesus. So the Death and Resurrection of the Messiah. It's not necessary to come every week. If you have a Sunday that you can stay, hopefully it's also, but come when you can and enjoy a time of learning. Epic Youth uh, need volunteers. And this morning we have Pringles cans. Yes. And I uh, encourage you to take the Pringles can, which are full of Pringles chips. And once you have consumed them, to replace them with your loose change, dollar bills, five dollar bills, maybe a blank check made out of cash. <laughs> this is a fundraiser for the youth, so these will be down in the lobby if you would like to help yourself and support our youth ministries. Uh, Super Bowl lunch, uh, gosh, it doesn't seem possible that's here already, but it is. So on Sunday the 29th, which will be our fifth Sunday, we are going to have a Super Bowl luncheon here, and uh, we encourage you to bring, again, some can soup or uh, again that blank check made out of cash or any kind of food or any kind of food but yes uh that will support our local food pantry tomorrow evening is our church council as always everyone is <laughs> encouraged and welcome to attend our church council meetings if you are not a formal member you would not have vote but you would have voice so we encourage you at 6 30 to come and be a part of our church council meeting. Um, and are there other announcements that need to be made? Oh, of course. <laughs> of course. Oh, all right, come on up. I knew I would forget something. No, you didn't. Oh. This time. This time. <laughs> um, any of you who have college-age students, I do have a form down in the gathering area. I need their addresses. You can put their uh, current year that they're in, if you would do that. And I do have a nice little bowl there if you want to throw us some money to help us purchase those cards. We do want to get them sent out um, and uh, show the college students some love around Valentine's Day. So if you can help us there, that would be great. I do have uh, posters up for the Super Bowl. Karen, you don't have to bring anything but food for the food pantry or money to donate to the food pantry. We will be providing four kinds of soup, sandwiches, soft pretzels and cheese, and um, light drinks and just so come and have fun. Um, the next thing is we're going to start with Operation Christmas Child already. What we would like to do is for the month of January, February, if you could bring in small toys that fit the boxes. We'll collect them and then towards the time of the national collection, we'll get the boxes packed and uh, get them to these children. Um, we also, for February, decided to do socks and that kind of item. So if you can help out, great. I will have a collection spot set up for next week. Um, I am so grateful for how this church reaches out and gives and it makes our job easier right now 
and uh, we just totally appreciate you all. So thank you. Sean wants to make a couple comments. Sean, you want to? You don't even know what it's going to be about. I don't. It's well, what you say. Uh, so uh, thank you. Well, yeah, you know, it's like an old one, but here he comes. Uh, but you may notice uh, the decorations are down in the church, so appreciate Kyle and uh, Loretta organizing these small but mighty uh, undecorating tree yesterday. So thank you for participating in that. Um, and then I just wanted to bring some awareness. You know, we are embarking on 2023, and when you look at the, all the great things that we do, our ministry efforts, all those things that uh, Blair was talking about, uh, one of the things that you know is required is uh, financial support. Um, you know, our our budget, you know, spending policy for 2023 is mirrored in last year's. You know, 230 plus thousand dollars needed to run this church annually. Uh, so, uh, you know, as you come into the year, maybe you experience a little blessing in the form of a bonus, or maybe it's a raise, or maybe it's a, you know, a tax refund, something. I hope you can consider uh, the church ministries uh, supporting the general uh, spend policy of this church. They need you know, over $4,000 a week to uh, pay for the things that we experience here. And if we had more, we could do more. So just kind of something to reflect on a little bit. Thank you, Sean. Um, a couple of introductions. Uh, some of you will remember, uh, some of you will not, but we have a guest with us, Alina, who was an exchange student here, stayed with the, the Dawsons back in, uh, a while ago. <laughs> but uh, I would encourage you to uh, greet Alina. And then um, this morning's speakers, uh, Don and Sissy Montgomery are with us to bring the message and tell us more about their ministry. Um, if you did not pick up one of their newsletters on the way in, I would encourage you on the way out to uh, pick up and read about their ministries here in town. And with that, let us, let us pray. Oh Lord God, what a beautiful morning you have given to us, even though it is very cold outside. We have come into this warm and comfortable building to be surrounded by your love and your warmth. We have also come to hear your word. We need to be encouraged. We need to be schooled. We need to be open to the leading of your Holy Spirit. So Lord, as we sing these songs and hear this word proclaimed and the message from the Montgomery's Please speak to each of us that as we leave this place, we might leave refreshed and strengthened to be your hands and your feet in this community. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And now, as you are able, if you would like to stand and join with the praise team and singing our two opening songs, Here I Am, Lord, and God of the City.
this morning, you should be able to notice a pattern of listening and trusting and willingness to walk not by sight, but by faith. And whoever path God would lead you. Let us join our hearts together in a time of prayer. Lord God, we have come into this place and now in the stillness and the quiet we listen to your voice. And in the stillness and the quiet we long for your touch. Each one of us has come today after a week of various activities, some bringing pleasure <coughs> and some not so pleasurable. <coughs> Whatever has brought us to this place, Lord, we seek your healing, we seek your encouragement. We listen to your voice. And in our hearts and in our thoughts, we want to respond to that question Whom shall I send? Whom shall I send? asked the Lord. May each one of us respond with send to me. Lord God, this morning we lift up those members of this congregation, our friends and our family that are dealing with cancer, dealing with emotional issues, physical issues, For those recovering from surgery this morning, we do pray that you would continue to be with Marty as he recovers from his surgery this week, and we give praise for uh, Mary Ann went to see her vascular surgeon, and, and um, while she does have some problems, the good news is they are not going to do anything now, but she just has to work up her physical activity overcome those issues and Lord we do give you thanks and praise we give you thanks for all the prayers that you have answered this morning Lord we as Pastor Lee is away on a time of refreshment we ask that you would be with her give her the gift of grace and the assurance that she needs to continue to be our good shepherd, our pastor. We pray for this congregation, Lord, as we embark on this new year, that you would continue to bless us as you have in the past. As we seek to be your hands and your feet in this community and to stretch out around the world, we ask that you would bless us. And we pray for the United Methodist Church at large. Lord, we give thanks and praise for our military, for our first responders, for our police that keep our neighborhoods safe. We ask that you would bless them. This morning, Lord, we are grateful that the Montgomery's are with us to bring the message of their ministry. We ask that you would continue to bless them as they do this great undertaking to bring joy to many families through the holiday season. Lord, there are things that have remained on our heart. You hear them, and again we lay them before you knowing that you hear, and we await your answer. In the meantime, Lord, we ask that you would 
hear us as we collectively join our hearts and our voices as we pray that prayer that you taught your disciples so long ago when you said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom, the power, and the glory of the world. Amen. This morning's anthem, Let the Walk of Faith Begin, a verse came to mind. The writings of Paul, 2 Corinthians. We live by faith, not by sight. Let the walk of faith begin. And if this doesn't bring a smile to your face, you need to go get some more coffee. <laughs>
pleasure to welcome Don and Sissy. Come on up. Bring us a little bit of a word. We, we know that we have, in a small way, supported their ministry here with the toys for Christmas. Um, but we're anxious to hear more of their testimony and, and their ministry. You can see that Don and I both got the message this morning, the white beard, the pink shirt, the blue blazer. So uh, <laughs> with that, welcome. <coughs> growing up in Union City, so I've been trying to introduce some of you to Don, because he didn't grow up in Union City, but he's been here, we've been married, it'll be 13 years, the end of March, and God has really taken us on some different roads, you know? Um, so, as Mr. Webb, Mark, said, you know, our, I just laid it on my heart that our scripture message should just be plain and simple because our walk with God really it can be very simple if we put him in control okay so Matthew 25 40 and the King Jesus will answer them truly I say unto you as you did it to one of them the least of these my brothers you did it to me Think of the people, I want you just to, if you just could close your eyes for one second, and I'm going way off of where I was, but it's because I believe the Holy Spirit is here, and he's leading me, not me. So if you close your mind, close your eyes, and just think for one minute, you or your, your children, I mean your children or your grandchildren, you're struggling, you have nothing. Life has really taken you down different paths and your roads. And you get a call, in our case, from the school saying, can we help you for Christmas? You know, and, and you don't have to keep your eyes closed unless you want to, but, you know, there's so many out there. That's, that's where we're at now. But God started us on a different road before that. Back in 2016, our church, the Assembly of God Church, went to the Mohawk Indian Reservation. And that was Dawn and I's first missionary trip together. It was actually my first missionary trip ever. And so it was quite different. Um, in congregations, at least in ours, probably not in yours, you have a few certain people that just want everything to go their way or they're going to be upset with it. So I know that don't happen here, but in our church, unfortunately, it did. I was ready to pack up and make the six-hour trip back home before we even unpacked our suitcase. And it was just over kitchen towel. That's what it was about. How silly. You know, but God used that to mold and make us to who we are today. Had we left, we would have missed out on so many opportunities. Don reminded me today, this morning, when I was just kind of trying to write a few notes down that, you know, the, the Mohawk Indians, there was, there was some gunfire that happened there. Right behind the church. Right behind the church. So the, the, the demonic pressure, I, I don't know what word I want to say, it was so strong there that you had to just say, Jesus, take a hold of me. So he, that was our first, and, and, and he really did we worked some things out. The next year, we had a couple came into our church as newcomers, and within a few months, they said, hey, we're going to go on a mission trip to Lafayette, Louisiana. Would anybody in the church like to go? And we said, yeah, you know. You know. You notice you said Lafayette instead of Lafayette, because while we were there, uh, the mayor came in and gave a speech to everybody, and he said, we can tell if you're not from here. But when you come here, you call it Lafayette. But we're a happy city, so we call it Lafayette. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and we, we went there to rebuild, and, and our family that we were sent to was this younger black family. The house that they lived in, I think that we have garages in Union City that are in better, that are in better shape, okay? 
this, there, wait, it was just horrible. It was just horrible. Three young kids there, mom, well, during the flood of 2016, mom went in to try to um, save some of the stuff and she was pregnant. The water was up to her chest, her and the, uh, the unborn child were separate. So, um, you know, but they survived. Oh, well, they had staph infection, I'm sorry, but they did end up being septic. As of today, that little boy, that baby that was unborn, is about this tall. And the girl that just fell in love with us, she still keeps in contact with us today. I just was messaging with her on Facebook. She's 14 now. When she was 10 years old, two years old after we were there, um, I got a, a message from her mom and said, Azariah has decided she's going to commit suicide, so she's in mental health. And the only people that can have her information is close family and you from eight days of hope. Would you please reach out to my daughter? This daughter would thank God for technology. She would video chat me. If mom had to run to the store, if his dad was not home, he was working in whatever the case might be. Mom had to run to the corner store. She was eight years old. I can't imagine leaving eight-year-old with two younger siblings, but she that's what she had to do. She, the little girl would video chat me, and I babysat from Pennsylvania. Okay, so praise God for some technology. Um, we did that as volunteers for a couple years, and in 2019, um, we thought God was going to move us to Lafayette, Louisiana. We became missionaries with, with um, Eight Days of Hope. But you had to serve 140 days with them. And when you're still trying to run your own business or work in a shop, how do you do 140 days? It was tough. We did not make it. God had other plans for us anyways, because if we would have made it, we would not be standing right here today. We would be somewhere on the road. Um, he had called us exactly a year later. Um, we thought we were going to move to Lafayette. A yeah, friend of ours. Was looking for properties down yeah, yeah. Well. We just couldn't decide. He wanted this one and I wanted that one. I wanted one. to be out in the country. I the wanted city. to be closer to the city. We just. She wanted to be closer to the city. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because at that time, we were already on board with doing Christmas with the school district, with, with Dr. Tromsha when she was up in high school. And so. I love going into their, their Dollar Generals. I paid a quarter for items for clothing. It was awesome. Um, we would leave on a mission trip, and we would come back so packed, we barely had room to sit in, fit in the vehicle, okay? But um, a friend of ours said, you know, ask God to give you a date when you're going in there. And so he did. He gave Dawn a date of um, May or April? May. May. My date was August 18th. So I'm like, okay, Lord, there were two different dates. You know, is he gonna go first and be second? You know, a lot of times that's what happens. Come to find out there was a, a, a couple up in Buffalo, New York, who had a warehouse and they met with eight days of hope and they actually basically gave them. 100,000 square feet for storage. Okay. We didn't know this until they um, put out a news feed that Eight Days of Hope Buffalo was going to kick off on August 18th. And on August 19th, we actually left, I think it was the 19th, we left and we went to Benton, PA for a flight. So we still love Eight Days of Hope. We actually went up there this past summer. You know, COVID kept us from going up in Buffalo. So I encourage you. Think now, think hard. What would you like to do for summer vacation? You could just join with us and go to Eight Days of Hope. I mean, they give you a place to sleep. You just gotta take a mattress. And they feed you. They feed you three healthy meals a day. A lot of carbs. Yeah, you get praise and worship in the morning and in the evening, and you get to bless other people. So I'm already looking forward to that. And if you serve three days with them, because you don't have to do eight. You'll get a ticket for a one-day pass to Kingdom Bath. How cool is that? Yeah. So we're doing that. We're, we're working with Eight Days of Hope still. Okay. But God let us become um, 
individuals who are not missionaries under them no more. I called up Global Outreach International, which is in Pontotoc, Mississippi. That's where we took our classes. And I said, well, you know, we're getting ready to cut out individual U.S. missionaries. But let us let, tell me what you got. Tell me what you got going on. And I said, look, we do the backpack program in Union City. We still call it's uh, Bailey Patouche. I will either text her or Mrs. Tom. She'll say, what do you need? Okay. Um, we do jingle jars. And jingle jars is something God laid on my heart quite a few years ago, and I took it to our pastor. At that time, our church was struggling, and I'm sure your church has never struggled, so you don't understand that, okay? Um, we were struggling, and we needed a new furnace, and he didn't want to pressure people for more money. You know. So the next year, I went to him and said, Pastor Tim, we had Pastor Tim Brunk at the time, God's really telling me to do jingle jars. And all it was was I took a bunch of empty Christmas jars in. People took them home. They put their change in it, brought it back in November. And the Saturday before Christmas, and this year it was kind of tough because we delivered Christmas presents uh, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Saturday we did jingle jars. You know, it was just a crazy, crazy time for Christmas this year. We go to Tops, and this year... Usually Tops gives us $50 in gift cards to help out. They gave us 100 this year, praise God. And we pay. We let God just work through us. He is the one that lays it on our heart. Who gets blessed with their cart full of stuff? And then we leave there, and we head up to the dollar store, Dollar General. This year we had 10 minutes because they were closing early. Okay? Um... So we had that in mind. We did, my husband actually came up with um, hats for the homeless. I was making some hats on a loom, and he's like, why don't you make them for the homeless? So I went to Pastor Tim. We ran with the idea, and now every Monday before Thanksgiving, we head up, and I've taken, I've taken some of the scarves that some of your parishioners have made. And we've taken hats and scarves and gloves, and we just, we were able to pray for people while we're waiting to get their Thanksgiving dinner to take home and cook. So you're welcome to join us on that. So we had a game plan. I wrote a letter, and we were the last individual U.S.-based missionaries that Global has kept on. All we got to do is keep letting them know what we're doing through our newsletters, which is what we had set out there for you guys to grab. Anybody here that wants to support us individually, if God lays that on your heart, all the information is in that newsletter, or you can come and call us. It is tax deductible if it goes through global. You know? um, so that's where we are You know, now, is we are in Union City. I get texts all the time. Um, fires, last year, uh, there was three or four people that needed stuff for fires. I had a lady hunt me down and said, look, we have two little girls that have nothing but diapers on. I need some clothes. And so we got down in here, got into the, the room. So that room is not just for Christmas. If you do know of somebody that is in need, let us know. Because it's like some of your songs were just right on key. We're to love people from here. God loves us unconditionally. He gives us his best. We need to give Union City our best. So I have to give my, my husband some time to speak now. One at a time. Let me give you an example of what's happening with the jingle jars. Uh, this was, I believe, it was our second year that we've done it. Uh, I've seen a young man and his wife in line with their cart full of groceries. And the Lord encouraged me to go pay for the groceries. Well, I was talking to the pastor. I'm like, where are you going right now? And I kept talking to the pastor. And he said, no, go pay for the groceries. I said, okay, Lord. And then I said, excuse me, young man, but the Lord led me over here to pay for your groceries. He said, oh, no, that's okay. You don't need to do that. You don't need to do that. I said, yeah, I do. He said, what do you mean? I said, well, God told me to do it. He said, well, who am I to argue with God? So we went ahead and paid for the groceries, $160. Like 15 minutes later, he left and went to talk to the Dollar General store. Well, this couple was up there, and 
And I said, well, oh, fancy meeting you here. He said, yes, sir. He said, because of what you've done for us down at the grocery store, he said, we were able to come up here and, and buy gifts for our children. Now, if that doesn't touch your heart, nothing will. Then we had, uh, we've actually delivered fair as far as Leesville. Uh, we had uh, some kids down there, we needed to deliver to them, and single mom. And we went down there, and we always have gifts for the parents also. So it's not just the children. As a matter of fact, this last year we've done 85 children and 54 adults for Christmas. And uh, anyway, we went in and People came in with the gifts and everything, and uh, told him, they said, they, you know, there's gifts in there for your mom, too. And he says, oh, thank you, thank you. He said, I didn't think she was going to have anything to open. Little things like that just kind of encourage you to do a little more. Um, there's so, I, I get blessed very much each year because I get to dress up as Santa Claus. Oh, oh. And deliver the gifts and then it's nice to see the reaction you know you can see the parents are thankful for you doing that but the most important part is they get to know that Santa believes in Jesus too before I leave that's very important for our, our ministry um, to continue on with one more story about the jingle jars um, this last year, we had gone out there, like you said, we had 10 minutes left because they were closing early due to the temperature. And uh, basically, we had done every gig that could take for everybody's cup. And I'm looking around, I don't see anybody. I walked over to her and I said, hey, I said, uh, we might as well take off and go. There ain't nobody here. I don't see one one other vehicle in the parking lot. She said, okay. I said, well, I, I need milk. And she said, no, we'll go over and just get it here. So we walked over, got the milk. I said, hey, Greg, got bread. I don't know if you get it too detailed, but that's okay. Uh, anyways, uh, we got up to the register, and there's this young black man with a cart and a, and a clothes bag just full of stuff. And I looked at her, and we only had $159 left to buy the paper tickets. I went over and I said to him, I said, excuse me, young man, I said, but uh, God wants us to pay for your stuff here. He looked at me like that was stupid or something. He's like, he looked at me like to say, well, why, why are you messing with me, old man? You know, and uh, I said, no, I said, well, we actually want to pay for your stuff. And she said, well, part of it. I almost agreed with her in that way. Yes, yeah, we're going to pay for all of it. And our neighbor, this cashier there, she said to him, she said, Michael, she said, if they say they're going to do something, they're going to do it. And he's like, okay, then he couldn't even put his stuff up on the counter. He just stopped. He couldn't even do it. And I said, well, we need to put the stuff up here so we can get paid for it. So he closed the doors. And he still, he just, he was in awe. He's standing there like, like a deer in the headlights. And, uh, well, after it all was wrong, I'll come to $429. I don't pay that much for stuff, I'm telling you. Know, like, <laughs> well, fortunately, we have missions money from global that we can call upon that when we need it. So we gave it to $159, and then I went out to the truck, got my car, and came in and paid for the rest of it. We helped him load the stuff in his truck, and the young man said to us, he's got a follow in front of his truck. The interesting part was this furnace went out that so he was on his way to get firewood. And the Lord said, stop at Dollar General first. But he was going right by there to get firewood. And if he hadn't stopped, it wouldn't have happened. Anyway, he got seven children. So uh, <laughs> we ended up, we gave him a ham. He asked, he said, can I come over and plow your driveway? I said, we didn't do that for you, for you to come back and do something for us. He said, but no, he said, I want to. 
Okay, so he came over to our driveway, came in the house, we had coffee and everything. Actually became friends, went out to his house, and, and uh, we supplied the family with Christmas gifts, besides what they had even bought, and uh, helped them wrap some windows because it was extremely cold in that house. And so it's, it's just little things like that that becomes a blessing to you. So. Yeah, it just wraps, kind of wraps it all up in, in a nutshell, so to speak. Let me be brief. We appreciate you as a church you know when you came on board with the, the food that means those meals mean a lot to these people they are so thankful sometimes the parents are almost more thankful for that food than they are gifts and so we appreciate that I appreciate the fact that I can have my house back with you giving us the room downstairs because our house was starting to crack in places because it was screaming. So we, we just appreciate you and we just appreciate you coming on board with us and just praying for us, wrapping. Oh yeah, oh, ladies gosh. coming, so and, ladies wrapping. coming yeah. and wrapping. You know, it's like I told a couple of, we will be getting together before Christmas because we gotta start putting some pencil bags together and notebooks. Those, those things are important too. When we give the gifts to the kids, a lot of people think, why are you giving so many gifts to one child? 18 to 20 gifts at least. They get, this year we were blessed to get a lot of underwear, new underwear. So, you know, that's something that some of these kids might not have very many pairs of. They're expensive. So underwear and socks, they all get at least two pairs of pants. They get two short sleeve shirts. Two long sleeve shirts. If we have a hoodie or pajamas for everybody in the family, they get one or one of those. They get um, a blanket to call their own. They get a hat and scarf set to match either match their winter coat or their favorite color. Because we're so blessed to be able to talk to the parents by doing this through the school system that you know the kids enjoy that. You know they all get a stocking full of goodies plus some toothpaste and toothbrush to keep their teeth clean. And then we're able to get them the toys that they're not going to just be pushed off in a corner. It's something they like, you know. And so this year, you know, was our first year we actually expanded into Mill Village School District, too. We know God has big plans. So, you know, just be aware that, you know, there's going to be a lot of stuff in that store room again. <laughs> and before we leave you, I'd like to share song with you as to where we have been today. All day long I've been with Jesus All day long My lips have uttered praise All day long My heart, my soul's been lifted In worship all day long, I have been with him. Remember, that's where you should be every day. It says, go tell it on the mountain, but I think it also means go do it on the mountain and in the valleys. Let's sing together.
God asked, Who shall I send? And the reply was, Here, my Lord, send me. As we go through this place and as we contemplate the blessings that God has shared with us, that there are others that are still in need. May our answer be, hear my word, send it. Go with the peace and assurance that God goes with you. Have a blessed week. Be a blessing to others. And we'll see you again next Sunday. Be sure to spend some time welcoming the Montgomery's enjoying some sweet treats and coffee. God bless.